Hello everyone and welcome to session number seven now of EART 22101 Evolution and Paleobiology. Time is flying past in this weird COVID pandemic era where time is also going incredibly slowly. I don't quite know what to make of it to be honest but Either way, I'm here. I'm recording another lecture on a um, another overcast day in autumnal Manchester. And this one is going to be on a topic called conservation paleobiology. So in order to give you a quick heads up, I will highlight that we're going to be covering first what conservation paleobiology actually is. It's always going to, it's always good to define terms. And uh, the first video is going to be doing this. I will then provide something of a deep time perspective. So this is kind of like an insight into what fossils, so paleontology and also paleoecology can tell us when it comes to conservation. I will then spend some time introducing uh, the impact that environmental stresses can have on ecosystems and highlight that using a series of case studies which take this deep time perspective using fossils and then i will finish this set of videos um, looking at multiple environmental stresses so um, trying to assess what fossils can tell us about when multiple things impact an environment all at once so because I have to record these things at least a week or two in advance, I've got relatively limited feedback so far. Only two people have fed back on the idea of providing um, some of the content in Zoom sessions. That feedback was positive. So certainly uh, this session, I'm going to continue doing that. To answer the, um, to the, the questions and the feedback, I will do my very best to record the Zoom sessions to make them available for those people who are not able to turn up. So the only thing that may stop me is um, technical difficulties. Hopefully that won't happen, um, but we are we will see. Um, so yes, that will hopefully be recorded and available to you on Zoom. And I'm also focusing on trying to make the uh, videos into slightly shorter chunks for you to make sure that they don't go on for, um, for too long to make them more bite-sized as it were. So with that context, then I'll be providing in um, Zoom a few case studies for um, conservation paleobiology. And also I will quickly dip into the world of geoheritage. This is not really related to conservation paleobiology very closely, but also it looks at how we can conserve fossils themselves. So rather than thinking about how we can use fossils to help conservation efforts for living ecosystems, we also need to look after the geological heritage that we have. And I thought that this would be a really interesting and cool thing to introduce very quickly as part of the session. I also wanted to highlight um, in this particular introduction that conservation paleobiology is a very new field. It's one that has only recently really come into its own as a standalone topic, probably within the last 10 years. I don't think that's an exaggeration. It's also one in which um, I don't claim to be a particular expert. My research is not in this area, as an example. So whereas the majority of the lectures that I've given you over the course of this unit so far have been playing very much to um, A, my strengths and B, the things that I, I, I know about, I research. This one has been a learning curve for me as well. As such, I must admit, I have relied on other experts in the arena to kind of draw together representative and interesting ca case studies, the ones that I'm presenting you today. So I just wanted to highlight that so I could gratefully acknowledge these two key sources for the four videos that are to come. I found the work of the this team of academics incredibly valuable while trying to um, kind of get to know this field in order to be able to, um, to cover it for you and while choosing interesting and um, uh, I think um, relevant case studies that I could highlight how pet conservation paleobiology can help you. When you're not an expert in a field, uh, efforts like this, this is, this is a review paper and actually a report on a workshop, are incredibly valuable, kind of getting to know the landscape of, uh, of a field, which is otherwise very difficult to do without being embedded in it yourself. So I am grateful to these people. And also, if you want to learn more about conservation paleobiology, I can highly recommend these two sources. They're really, really good. Um, and so with that, that's my introduction done. Um, and I will see you in video number one in just a second. Thank you very much for turning up for this set of videos. See you soon.